a harm reduction is something that we see all the time, every day, every day. But then when it's about drugs uh, or uh, things like HIV, it's all of a sudden a very taboo thing and uh, people have to be very convinced um, to, to actually do this. So harm reduction in HIV care, because there are many, many subjects that can uh, be implemented on. So in HIV care, it refers to reducing the negative consequences of HIV and its transmission. Uh, it prioritizes the health and well-being of individuals and acknowledge it, acknowledges that eliminating all risks may not be feasible, but minimizing harm is achievable and beneficial. So the in 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 short, it means that we are not aiming to necessarily eradicate HIV. Uh, this would be ideal, of course, but in the meantime, we are trying to uh, understand how can you uh, minimize the harms caused by HIV, how can you minimize the risk of infection, um, uh, these kind of subjects, because unlike uh, things like unsafe sex uh, will probably always exist. This is not something you can ban people from doing. Uh, so because of practices like this, it's it's there's always a risk of, of contacting HIV. So how do we make this uh, a less harmful thing? Uh, I also think it's good to talk, touch on uh, drug use since HIV uh, contraction is so linked to drug use. Um, why do you think people re react differently to the same drug? Just to go over some basic drug knowledge. Why wouldn't everyone, like if you take an ecstasy pill, why doesn't everyone have the exact same reaction? Okay, I'll, I'll provide a spoiler. Um, Oh, it's a little bit, but it's anyway. It's a drug set in setting, so you think about the drug. Um, this can be uh, any drug, uh, but the the, the how it's because um, drugs are illegal, so it's not a regulated market. So maybe there's a little bit more, like it's a little bit stronger. Maybe that's it's mixed with another drug. It can be anything like this, so you never know exactly unless you test uh, what drugs you're taking. Uh, then the set is the person, uh, the underlying psychiatry, uh, the phase in your life, the things that you've gone through, the social context that you are in, which means like maybe uh, you don't have a lot of money, uh, you experience a lot of violence, there's a discrimination, um, trauma, etc. And lastly, setting, uh, which means the space that you use in. So if uh, this is something that I see, that I tell people a lot during my work, uh, that when you're used to taking drugs in an alley with like very windy, a lot of people around trying to quickly like use some drugs, there's going to be a lot of adrenaline in your body. So then when you use drugs in a, in, for, in, in, for instance, in a consumption room, so a specific space for drug use, um, it will be a much more relaxed environment and the drugs therefore will hit like there will less be less adrenaline and the drugs will hit you harder because of that. So things like this is why it's important to, um, to understand like what are why what, how does drug use influence uh and the the, the underlying or the the set in setting uh influence the outcome of the drug the effect um then the basics of hiv hiv i think the most easy uh, way to remember it is not transmitted through saliva casual contact or insect by bite, insect bites uh this is a, a misconception that i sometimes encounter it is though contracted through sexual contact, uh, which can be unsafe sex, which means uh, no condom. Uh, it can. It's, there's a higher risk of contraction uh, of HIV if you have multiple sex partners, um, because there's more contact, of course. Uh, sharing needles and syringes, uh, which is why it's important to always have safe, uh, safe spaces and provide new syringes for every injection and to not share, especially. Uh, mother to child transmission through pregnancy, childbirth, uh, and uh, breastfeeding, and occupational exposure so through your job, where you accidentally get poked by a needle or something like this. This is also like just to go back to the drugs. There's uppers, downers, and trippers. Uh, these are the three. Every drug will fall into one of these categories uh or in overlap so the uppers make you more active like cocaine downers like heroin make you more calm drowsy maybe and trippers like lsd will uh make you trip and then for instance cannabis is in the middle of all of this it's uh it does a bit of everything which is very interesting so then identifying common barriers uh 
uh, that we're looking at the challenges faced by diverse key populations in access HIV uh, prevention services. I thought maybe we can do a Mentimeter, but since we are not that many, 15 people, I think, we can maybe just talk. Uh, so what are the barriers that you encounter during your work uh, when you try to access or like deal with HIV uh, prevention services or any services alike? Yes, thank you. Should I, should I, well, maybe you can just uh, find when to stop and to start. Um, so health for healthcare workers, um, it's often stigma and discrimination that they face themselves from uh, either their own community, so non people who are not necessarily marginalized or something like this, but their own community, uh, that they find it dirty, that they are work working with people who have HIV, this kind of thing, uh, which can impact the quality of care. Uh, there's often, not often, there's sometimes a lack of training, uh, so insufficient training on the specific needs and the issues faced by key populations. Uh, so understanding what they're going through, uh, what topics to address, where they are, um, how, what, what words to use even, how to create like a space where you can discuss these kind of things. And, uh, and like we said earlier, how to be flexible. Um... And uh, there's also bureaucratic hurdles where you where you have to find out how to go through the system, how to make the system work for you. And this I can't touch on this now because everyone's from different countries. Uh, but this is something that people uh, struggle with a lot. Uh, and for key populations, uh, there's also stigma and discrimination. Um, for instance, for people using drugs, for sex workers, for LGBTQ plus individuals. Uh, there's a lot of discrimination going on uh, and this also makes that they often don't want to seek services, they don't want to seek uh, help from, from healthcare professionals uh, through self-stigma also, but also from being seen in those clinics, like we said earlier, um, this kind of thing. There will be financial barriers. Um, in many countries or places, there's there's no financial help, uh, there's no healthcare um provided in some countries even having hiv is uh, criminalized which is incredibly difficult because uh how would you fight something that is criminalized how why would you go uh be diagnosed if if the if a yes means that you are criminal uh but also financial barriers entails um transportation issues uh like trying to understand how to get to places paying for for the transport um and a loss of income when you go to like uh, go to the clinic uh means that you can't work so for other people this is also enough of a reason not to go then cultural and language barriers um i've already heard that uh, there are many uh, social groups from different backgrounds uh, that you encounter uh so differences in language and cultural norms uh, can maybe create these misunderstandings and also reduce the effectiveness of the communication. Um, so then people have to work with talks, uh, like with translators or maybe with an app, um, which doesn't always work so well. And what I've also heard is that um, uh, the people translating, maybe you call someone or they come around uh, to translate between you and your the person coming to see you. Uh, is that the, the, the talk? I, sorry, I don't think I'm saying the right word. I think it's the Dutch word. So the, the translator, will also uh, stigmatize the person who's there for the HIV cons consultation uh, and then start like saying nasty things to them or uh, or this kind of thing. This is something I've heard before too. So it's difficult to, to keep track of these kind of things. Um, and then lastly, fear of legal repercussions. Um, they're like, so I've heard in Zimbabwe, this is something that I heard is um, that as soon as the the um, hospital suspects someone of uh, having HIV or using drugs, they call the police. Um, so why would you like exactly why would you try to seek help if uh, there's already a fear of police coming around? Um, and then sometimes uh, healthcare is actually free, but you still have to pay for medicine or bandages. Uh, and this is sometimes already too much for people to uh, to pay. Okay. And then overcoming obstacles to linkage services. There is prep access. Um, so there's prep. Uh, many of you probably already know this, but it's uh, a medicine that you take daily. 
uh, for if you don't have HIV to prevent you from getting HIV. This is incredibly uh, effective. Uh, there's almost no risk at all of, of getting an HIV and there's almost never any side effects. Uh, but barriers may include higher costs for, for the medicine if it's not covered, uh, limited availability, um, maybe a lack of awareness that it exists, you really have to tell people, uh, and a, st a stigma associated with the use of, uh, of PrEP. Because also it's it's often seen maybe as a uh, something for gay people, uh, etc. And then there's, it's an even diff more difficult to convince people to start using this. Um, harm reduction is, uh, there's an obstacle on that because there might be legal restrictions on needle exchange programs. Uh, there's often not enough funding. Uh, and again, there's social stigma in talking about uh, HIV, about drug use, like making these topics uh, uh, like, um, like a not a taboo. Is a, is, is a whole struggle. Uh, then TB or tuberculosis screening. Uh, obstacles can include a lack of integration with other services. So it might be that they are very far removed from other places. So then people uh, will not go to this place, like the TB screening service that's very far away. Uh, and also maybe there's not enough uh, screening programs. And what I see a lot is that there's mostly um, a fear of diagnosis. The fear of diagnosis that if you then they do get diagnosed, it means uh, that you have it. Uh, and this is why in the Netherlands, HIV is not so active anymore because uh, there was a lot of uh, H like uh, harm reduction that was very effective. Uh, but what I see now is, for instance, with cancer, people say like, "Oh yeah, I think I've got cancer, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get tested. I'm not gonna sort this out because if I do, then you know, what is gonna happen? Or COPD, like the lung lung uh, capacity decreasing, they're not gonna do anything about it." Uh, because doing something about it means that you have to acknowledge that you have it. All right. So then some solutions. I like solutions a lot. Uh, our integrated care models uh, is a very effective one. Uh, so making sure that everything is together. Uh, you can try to see if the, if the uh, maybe a housing situation or like a service or uh, HIV uh, service, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, is all together in one uh, in one building, and probably mental health support is also wonderful. It's in the same building, just so that people know. Oh yeah, I go to this place and I can do this, this, and this. Everything will be sorted out. Uh, community outreach is the most uh, practical, effective thing. Uh, like the most highly recommended thing, in my opinion. Uh, it just very simply means that you go. You go see people, uh, you find them, you go to them, and they, they don't only have to go to you. Um, and then you can provide them with the information, understand like where they should go to, understand what the problem is, uh, maybe try to uh, make them understand that things are like to try to destigmatize things, um, this kind of thing. Because a lot of people just don't go to, uh, to community centers uh, to, to sort out stuff. Um, and also, like was mentioned before, that there's a lot of stigma uh, connected to, to going into certain buildings. So if you go to them, then this is already uh, solved. Um, also, going with them to meet to, to the appointments. So not only do you find them, but also if you like help them and try to see that you can make an appointment in the hospital, for instance, uh, go with them. Um, because there's a, there's a there's a chance that maybe they will not go to the appointment even if it's made for them, uh, also from maybe stress like what will people think of me that I would be maybe be too dirty to be there or I would not know what to say or what topic to to address or maybe I don't speak the language very well, uh, and often people uh who who look a bit rough you know they look uh not like the the average person in the hospital, they might be uh treated in a very disrespectful way. They might have to wait for many hours when other people are uh, treated much earlier. Uh, and if you have to wait for many hours and you need to use drugs in between, this is also very difficult because you, you can't really leave the queue. So then if you're with someone, uh, the chances of going to the appointment at all are much higher. Uh, and then uh, the, the, the experience there will also be much better. Uh, so policy and advocacy, advocacy. Uh, is advocate for policy changes that support the expansion and funding of essential services. 
uh this is a very big topic because how do you how do you advocate um for something this is something we will discuss in a little bit um but it's it's trying to continually like fight to make uh the situation better in a oh in a admit in a policy and uh, uh in just awareness of the situation so you can talk to um you can talk to community leaders uh you can talk to the government, you can uh, have grassroots organization, etc. We will talk about this later. Uh, a very effective way of in policy advocacy uh, is collecting data because people are very inclined to uh, not really believe what you're saying, like they need help, but uh, what does that mean? And like, do they really need help? Or like, do they deserve help at all? And if you collect data and have numbers and have examples to show, then there's no way uh, to deny uh this um and also going to the media is is uh, very effective sometimes and then lastly to uh train professionals even the the receptionist in the clinic should be trained uh on maybe destigmatization on how to talk to people using drugs or with hiv um uh cont contamination or who people who have hiv um so that you you create a whole situation and a whole space where uh you feel as a person coming there to the to the service you feel welcomed and you feel at least slightly understood um yes and as you try to keep uh care as intra intercommunal as possible so you try to see if you can for instance uh hire psychologists yourself or social worker yourself uh try to use peers and voluntary volunteers to uh to run the service and if you have to you can send someone to a clinic but this is often a big step uh so if you keep something within the community uh it seems to be more efficient um and less of a less of a hurdle officially i planned a break right now uh would you like to would you like to continue and take the break a little bit later i see a nodding for a break We've been almost a bit like for almost an hour, so maybe you could take a fifteen minute break, uh, and I will see you then. Yeah. All right. Yes. So, thank you. We'll go to practical tips. Uh, now, so we're gonna offer practical tips and approaches to service providers, uh, to overcome these barriers that we've been talking about. Uh, we've already discussed. I've heard some of your practical tips to the problems that you encounter, which is really wonderful. I would love to hear more about that. Um, so we can start with this and if you have anything to add or a question to ask, feel free. Um, so we will start with cultural competence training. Uh, it's mostly about like creating a sensitivity to the needs uh, of key populations, uh, and understanding maybe what culture they come from, uh, if that can mean within the country or outside of the country. Uh, and just to to give them the space and, and the the warmth to to feel safe and to share uh, and to feel welcomed. Uh, this is this often done through trainings that are available. We also have a, a training like this if you are looking for one. Um, just to to make things a little bit easier. Then the patient centered care is uh, together with the outreach work that I discussed earlier, where you actually go outside and you meet people. Patient centered care is extremely important. Um, so instead of trying to make people come within uh, office hours, for instance, uh, you try to see, okay, when it, when does it work for them to uh, to be open? So that means you maybe you will be open from uh, seven till nine in the evening. Um, so basically you try to respect uh, and also respond to the, to the needs of the population. Um, yep. Uh, and the outreach work and then the collaborative partnerships uh, is trying to work together with the community-based organizations so try to have as many partnerships and uh, uh, like communication uh, with it with the partners that are near to you so you can refer to them you can discuss people because often people go to multiple places so you can discuss uh, one person among the different partners uh so that you can have a uh, uh, a better idea of what is what is uh helpful and what should be happening uh 
then the best best practices uh like confidentiality are very important so you ensure strict confidentiality confidentiality protocols uh just to respect the, the privacy of course of the key population and with that you build uh, the trust um an, an example of something that shouldn't happen for instance that i heard is um that healthcare workers would go to the family and tell the family that oh yeah your your daughter your your son or your, your child has um hiv uh without the approval of the person who has the, the hiv this is uh and then of course the, the in this particular instance they were then ostracized from the family they were kicked out uh so this is you should really uh be in communication and uh uh, uh actually understand what they want uh flexible services uh mobile clinics i would like to hear more about that because one of you is working in a mobile clinic so I'll ask about this uh and the extended hours i was talking about um okay and then we'll move on to service uh, assessing service and availability and quality um so you will avail evaluate the current state of hiv uh which we'll do here uh, which is community community led monitoring. Uh, this involves grassroots, uh, um, and a way to do this, for instance, is uh, uh, I've heard that there are um, you can send a mystery guest to um, a hospital, and then they will assess the the evaluate like evaluate the process, how they treated, what were the solutions, what questions were asked, uh, and this is often in uh, uh, in collaboration with the with the hospital itself. So then you can uh, give feedback and it will be well received. Um, but then by having these uh, uh, these feedback loops, it's much more effective than just coming to them and saying, "Hey, I've heard from this and these people, like or from multiple people, that this is not going well." Um, then evaluating services uh, is a service mapping where you identify existing HIV prevention services in the area. Uh, and this can be governmental ones or non-governmental ones uh, or community-based ones and just understanding where people uh, can go and what services are, are available and how to collaborate uh, the service mapping is uh, quite similar actually I should have gotten that out and then the needs assessment essential uh, is where you actually conduct surveys and interviews and just talk a lot to the key population uh, to understand their needs uh, and ex the perception of existing services or what do they think of what is already existing and how could this be better uh, for this to happen you need to have trust in relationships you have to have like attract them or go to them and uh, uh, and create conversations that where people are willing to share um there's also something that, that uh, peers can do or voluntary works can do if there's a lack of funding um and then resource in inventory is just understanding what are the resources such as medic medication testing kits and trained personnel uh what is available to us uh then the measuring uh of accessibility and the quality of available services uh you have accessibility metrics which are the me the measure of physical ac accessibility to services so that means the distance the transportation options uh, the operational hours, the waiting times, the page satis satisfaction, sorry, and the quality metrics, uh, where you assess the quality of service based on patient satisfaction also, and uh, adherence to clinical guidelines, uh, health outcomes. So you try to understand, okay, people went with these uh, uh, with these problems. How is it going now? You keep you keep track of them. Um, so the follow ups and. Um, and also through surveys.